Welcome to Zig for the Uninitiated. My name's Tyler. Let's get started. Today is a long awaited day. I have been teasing you guys about talking about allocators specifically, and we are going to get started. And today we're going to start with the page allocator. Partly because it's the most um, simple allocator that is in the Zig library, in my opinion, but also because it's one of the most basic allocators. So, but what is the page allocator? Well, simply put, but maybe not helpfully, the page allocator allocates pages. The question then is, well, what's a page? And for that, we need to go back and talk about the process memory segments. So if you remember from the very first video that I made, we talked about processes and how their memory is laid out. Now different um, parts of your uh, process go into different parts of memory. For example, you had code that might live in one segment. Usually code's going to go at the very top of your um, uh, process or at the bottom, depending on how you want to look at it. But it's going to go at zero. And then you might have a stack which starts at the bottom and grows upwards. And then you'd have a heap, which would go after the code segment. And you might have a data segment too. And there's, there's different kinds. But for right now, we're going to talk about these three. Code and data we'll put in one. We'll have the heap up here and the stack here. Now, if you had a second process, it would also want to put its code in here and its heap here and its stack down here. And that's because, particularly when you have code and you have the stack, the way the functions are going to work, they might want to work with different bits of memory, referencing places in memory. And if it can't, you know, put that in there uh, concretely, then it's going to add a whole other process of being able to translate those addresses to the correct addresses when they get put into memory. And in fact, that's what the operating system does, is that when you start a process, the operating system only has a set amount of physical memory. And if it wants to be able to support running multiple processes concurrently, then it needs a way to be able to map those processes memory to different locations in the physical memory. And this is called the virtualization of memory. And the benefit of this is that from the point of view of a process, it has access to all this memory, but also doesn't have to worry about where in the physical memory that is. It doesn't have to worry about updating all the addresses that might be in its code to map to those locations. Now, what the operating system does, and it does this in order to prevent fragmentation, um, and to help make it easier to map is it provides what are called pages, which are set sized units of memory. And so from the operating systems point of view, when a process asks for memory, it's going to say, well, I have these many pages of memory, these many chunks, and each chunk is a set size. <clears throat> in most cases in most operating systems and hardware, it's going to be four kilobytes. So I'm going to talk about it like it is, but that's not true for all. All operating systems are all architectures, and we might look at that later. For now, we're going to talk about like it's four kilobytes. And so you can see we have zero through 64 kilobytes here, which means we have 16 pages of memory, physical memory. And we're going to give one of the pages to the operating system. <clears throat> what we can then do is that when this process starts, the operating system can say, hey, you know what? We're going to put some memory here for your code. We're going to put memory here for your heap. We're going to put memory here for your stack. And when process two starts, they might say, you know what? Here's where your code can go. And you know, we'll put your heap right here. And we'll put your stack right there. Right. So right now we have this page taken, and this page taken, and this page taken. And then process two has this page, and this page, and this page. Well, if process one wants to start using this page for its stack, it can't grow into here. That, that page is already used. But the operating system can just map this page into memory. 
and say, here it is. And the mapping works seamlessly. From the point of view of the process, this memory is right above that memory. Now, physically, it's not. But from the point of view of the process, it is. That is what the page allocator does for us. It manages this give and take between the operating system and the process. When you want a new page, you, the page allocator says, hey, operating system, give me a new page. And the operating system gives it a new page and back and forth. Now for POSIX systems, these are done through two system calls. One's called uh, oh, map, in map. The other is called mUnmap, which stands for memory map and memory unmap. And it's very intuitive what it's doing. It is mapping memory from physical memory to your process. That's the high level of it, <clears throat> without going into too much technicalities of what's happening. So in the Zig standard library, the page allocator exists at the uh, standard heap page allocator .zig, uh, file. So if we look at the page allocator, you can see that very top, it's allocating this, uh, or it's creating this virtual table, V table, which if you remember from our last video is required for every allocator to implement. It implements three functions, alloc, resize, and free. Today we're going to look at alloc and free. If you look at alloc, it has the necessary definition we will see that immediately we get rid of this um, the ra and the log to align uh, parameters as well as the first parameter which provides context so really all we care about is the size that's being allocated in the number of bytes we want allocated and we just make sure we're not allocating zero bytes because that's an error we don't want to do that then we check to make sure that we're not allocating more bytes than we can do uh, with constraints of size. And then we do some specialization here. So here we're just checking to make sure, are we running Windows? If we're running Windows, we have to do something else because there's different system calls for Windows than there is for POSIX systems. And so in Windows you use this virtual alloc function. It's very similar to the inmap function. And you just return the address that it gives back. In the POSIX system, there's a bit of extra stuff that goes on, but you'll see we call POSIX inmap, pass it in the appropriate required parameters. All these do is set the kind of memory, set some protections about it, right? So here we're going to make this a read and write memory. As you can see, we do the same thing in Windows, we make this page read and write, and then we set it private and anonymous, which is something else that POSIX systems are able to do by making managing that those pages of memory. Now, if there's any error doing that, we'll return null. And once that's happened, that gives us a slice. We do a few other extra things here, but the big thing is we then return a, the pointer of that slice back out. And that's how we get memory. Now, it's important to notice here, I want to go this. When we use the memory map, uh, or not memory map, the page allocator, and indeed the memory map function, because it's required for memory mapping, all memory will be mapped to the nearest, to the, it'll be forward mapped to the nearest uh, page size. So if you ask for one byte, you're going to get the entire page size, even if you only need one byte. So if we look at what page sizes are, we can see for WASM, we're going to get 64 kilobytes of memory. Uh, for ARC, you know, the architecture A ARCH 64. Um, depending on what uh, operating system you're going to have. If you're using some of those Mac operating systems like Mac OS, iOS, watchOS, um, you'll get 16 kilobytes of memory. Otherwise, you're going to get 4 kilobytes. Then on Spark 64, you get 8. Otherwise, you get another 4 kilobytes. So that means that no matter what size you request, like I said, if you request 1 byte, you're going to get four kilobytes, eight kilobytes, 16 kilobytes back. That could be a bit inefficient, right? And so this is the, the big caveat with the page allocator. The big caveat with the page allocator is you should not use the page allocator directly. That doesn't mean you won't ever use it in your code, but you should not be calling alloc directly on the page allocator. 
unless you really know what you're doing and you really understand why you need to do that. Because if you're just using it to allocate different objects in your code, you're going to be eating up all the pages of your memory very fast. If you allocate an object that's say a thousand kilobytes, so even then it's a big size, there's three kilobytes left that are not being used when you do that with the page allocator. And if you're doing that every time you're allocating this 1,000 page object, you're very rapidly wasting 75% of your memory. And that's why you don't want to use this page allocator directly. Rather, what you'd want to use it for is as a backing allocator. And what that means is that you have another allocator that has uh, a different, some kind of algorithm for managing the memory that is returned from the operating system using the page allocator. So for example, you might have the arena allocator, which we'll talk about in another video. What the arena allocator will do is use the page allocator, request some memory, and then once it gets that memory, you know, those, that chunk of four kilobytes back from the operating system, it will then internally chunk that up into smaller bits, which means that you get faster turnarounds when you request more memory, because now you're not having to go to the operating system and make the allocation every time. What you're going is, you're just going to the allocator and saying, hey, do I have any more memory left? And if it says yes, then it just uses the memory that's left from that one. And if there's no memory left, it will go back to the operating system and ask for another page. But in that way, you're using the full space as you need it. So that's the page allocator. Uh, we can look at the free function. It's very simple. If you're on Windows, it's going to call virtual free. And if it's on a POSIX system, it's going to call mmunmap. Very simple, but very powerful in the sense that is it, it forms the bedrock of many other allocators that we can use, like the arena allocator and the general purpose allocator. As words of announcements, I do want to apologize for being um, perhaps a little late making this video. Uh, but also, I want to announce that I am now the operator and, and owner and, and administrator of zigit.dev. Now, zigit.dev is a website, it's a forum uh, made for people who want to learn or who are programming in Zig. And in it, there's help uh, documentation, there's help uh, questions. You can go and ask questions and get access to some of the best minds of Zig. Um, and I'm not counting myself in that group. But people like Andrew Kelly, who writes Zig, and many of the other core developers of Zig will go on to Zig it and occasionally answer questions, as well as other individuals who work in Zig or use Zig at their work or just have lots of experience with it. It's a great website, and you're able to do other things like get explanations in depth about different topics of Zig, as well as showcase any projects that you're working on and find you know, media articles uh, relating to Zig. Now, I do want to preface, I did not create Zigit. That was done by Jose Colon, uh, or Dude the Builder, who also has a channel here on, um, on YouTube, and I highly recommend that you go and watch his videos. He has a very good series about learning Zig from the basic syntax all the way to beyond what I'm talking about in these videos. Great videos. Highly recommend watching them. Jose set Zigit up uh, several years ago and had been operating it and administering it for a while until this past month when he reached out to me and, and just needed to start working on other things. And so I've taken over for him. Take a look at it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.